my symbol of peace by helping this video achieve the like goal. Full details at the end of the video. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Mango Etc. And I'm here today to bring you What If Deku Ate The Gum Gum Fruit Part 4. By now you should know the draw. If you are coming in blind or you need that recap, go back and watch the previous parts. This part being Part 4 will cover the USJ arc. And without further ado, I will now be diving right in. Next day, um, you see reporters outside UA trying to get the scoop. News that All Might is teaching at UA now and the reporters are hungry for information. Eventually a Razorhead comes out and tells them that All Might is off today and that they should go away. A Razorhead heads back to the main building and as the reporters try to follow, the UA bearer activates. Some of the reporters are unfamiliar with it so the others explain it to them. Letting them know it's a bearer that locks down the whole school from anyone who tries to approach without a school ID or visitors pass. In the background, an ominous figure can be seen. Back in class, a Razorhead is praised with everyone on the successes of yesterday's battle trial. He does also mention to Bakugo that he needs to grow up and stop wasting his talent and tells Deku that he is underestimating himself and that he is still holding back. After that, he goes on to say they need to decide on the class president. Everyone was expecting a Razorhead to announce something more heroish, but all are willing to take on the role. Not to after too long, I just suggest that they should vote to see who gets to do it so they do so. Deku and Momo win the vote so they are announced the class presidents. Over lunch, Deku eats with Ida and Yureka and it is here we learn about Ida's hero family name. We learn about his brother, the hero agency he has and how Ida looks up to him. However, in the midst of lunch, an alarm goes off. Not knowing what's going on, Ida asks what a level 3 alarm means, to which a third year student replies it means a break in and that this is the first during his time at the school. Panic fills the lunch hall as everyone is trying to get to a safe place. From out the window, Ida notices the break-in is just reporters and there's nothing to worry about. President Mike and Eraserhead are keeping the reporters at bay while they wait for their police. With Yuraka's help, Ida is able to calm down the situation inside, informing them of what he discovered. The police come and get rid of the reporters. Being impressed with how Ida dealt with the situation in the canteen earlier, Deku will suggest Ida is better suited to be class president, to which the rest of the class will agree. Ida graciously accepts the role. Back at the point of the break-in, the principal accompanied by some of the other staff members are suspicious over the break-in and consider it's the start of something bigger to come. It is now Wednesday and time for another hero lesson. A Razorhead tells them that along with himself, All Might and another will be present for the lesson. He goes on to tell the class that today will focus on rescue training. He will also let them know that their hero costumes are not compulsory this time around. Everyone is excited for another hero lesson. As they get on the bus to go to the training site, Yureka comments on how Deku isn't in his hero costume. Deku will comment on the fact that it didn't survive the battle trial and he is waiting for it to be repaired. At the USJ site, the class meet 13. After a Razorhead asks 13 why Orma isn't present, 13 explains that he went over his limit and may show up later. With this in mind, the Razorhead decides to start the class. 13 has a quick introduction explaining his quirk, explaining how dangerous any work can be, explaining the importance of the quirk apprehension test and the battle trial, and what the takeaway from today's lesson will be. After the amazing speech, a Razorhead is ready to officially start the lesson when a mysterious hole appears. As villains start to come out of it, a Razorhead prepares for battle while telling the class to huddle up and telling 13 to protect them. Some of the students are confused and wonder if this is part of the training, but a Razorhead assures them that this is the real deal. One of the villains states, according to the intel he received, All Might should be present, with another one stating, no worries, I'm sure we can lure him out. It is very quickly discussed that although the USJ site has measures in place for intruders, they must be currently being jammed. They comment on the fact that this is a well organised attack and the villains must have a serious objective in mind. Eraserhead tells 13 to get the class to safety before going on the attack. During his initial attack, we learn the limitations of the Eraser Quirk and just how impressive he can be. As 13 tries to get the class out of there, one of the villains who seems to be able to warp is blocking the way out. He announces the League of Villains and that they are there to kill All Might. Not seeing All Might, this villain attempts to stop 13, however, Kurishima and Bakugo attack. 13 warns them to go back, but it's too late. This villain warps the whole class, separating them all. Deku falls into the flood zone. He immediately notices that something is wrong and that he can't move his body. Very shortly after realising that, a villain appears and is about to attack Deku. 
To see you appears to save him, she grabs Deku and bails out of there. She brings him and Minata to a seemingly safe location. They discuss what is going on and come to the conclusion that for now, they have to do what they can to help. All Might, after failing to get through to a Razorhead All-13, decides he can muster up 10 minutes and is about to head out when the principal appears. He scolds All Might for not taking his responsibilities as a teacher more seriously before convincing him to forget heading to USJ and have tea with him instead. Although he doesn't voice his concerns to the principal, he is a little worried about the fact that he can't get hold of a Razorhead or 13. Shoji confirms that everyone from the class has been separated and spread out throughout the facility. 13 instructs Ida to use his quirk to get out of there and alert the main building of the danger that they are in. Ida is reluctant at first, not wanting to leave anyone behind, but after some words of encouragement from the class, he is willing to do so. The villain in the path hears this and tries to stop it from happening, but 13 attacks using his quirk. Back in the flood zone, Minato is panicking, saying if these guys were sent here to kill All Might, there's no way they stand a chance against them. After that, while talking to Tsuyu and Minato, Deku is able to come to two conclusions. One, they had intel on the USJ facility and two, they didn't have intel on the class's quirks. Deku reckons because they don't know about the class's quirks, that's why they separated them and why they're being so cautious. They explain their quirks to one another. Mineta still ends up feeling useless here, but villains get sick of waiting and split the boat in two. Mineta panics and throws his balls into the water. Because of his scaredy cat attitude to see you ask him why did he come to UA. Mineta replies it's normal to be scared in this current situation, considering their age and the fact that they are in a life or death situation. It's during this time Deku remembers some words of wisdom from All Might. Deku launches a new move, the Gum Gum Detroit Smash. This has the same effect as his attack from the original story. To see you rounds him and Mineta up for their escape. Mineta noticing that Deku is scared too, gains some courage and throws multiple balls at their enemies as they are escaping, sticking them together and bringing them to their defeat. Shoto, who is on his own, has easily dealt with the enemies that was forced upon him and has left unable to talk for interrogation purposes. Momo, Kyoka and Kimonari are still easily able to deal with the enemies they are faced with. The Razorhead faces off of who he thinks is the last boss. It's commented on that he is starting to fatigue in this fight. That's when the true last boss appears and puts him down. 13 is also struggling in his fight. The pupils around 13 panic but muster up enough courage to help either escape. Now closest to the area a Razorhead is fighting in, Deku, Tsuyu and Mineta watch on in fear. In the collapse zone, Bakugo and Kirishima have no problems with their enemies. After defeating all of them, Kirishima suggests that they help their classmates. Bakugo says he's going after Kurigiri and explains why. Realising that that's the smart thing to do, Kurishima decides to tag along. Kurigiri lets Shigaraki know that he has let a kid escape to which Shigaraki is mad about and says if that's the case it's time to bail. He also states before they go he wants to take out some of the kiddies first. So he heads over to and attacks to see you. Her, Deku and Mineta are too stunned to move but just at the last moment a razor head erases his quirk. Deku uses his opportunity to attack with a gum gum smash blocked by the Nomu. Shigaraki is impressed before calling Deku an All Might fanboy. Before he can order his next move, All Might arrives on the scene. Things with All Might start off like they do in the original story. He speed bits some enemies, saves Deku to see you in Mineta, and tells them to take a razor head and head to safety before taking on the Nomu. Where the next change will occur is when Deku usually runs out to try help All Might. Due to the lack of relationship between the two within the scenario, he wouldn't do this and would more than likely be cheering him on like the rest of the class. But worry not, All Might would still have Bakugo, Shoto and Kirishima who come to his aid. With All Might now free thanks to help, again things will continue to play out like in the original story. Shigaraki will still order the Nomi to attack Bakugo, with All Might still saving him. All Might will still order the kids to fall back and Shigaraki will still order Kurigiri and the Nomu to deal with All Might while he deals with the kids. Seeing All Might charge directly to the Nomu holds Shigaraki who watches as All Might defeats the Nomu with a plus ultra. Now I think there would be a small difference within this fight. In the original story we know the amount of time All Might can spend in his muscle form is shortened after the events of episode 1 or chapter 2. As the events have not happened, I think it's safe to assume he would have time left. It is because of this when Shigaraki and Kurigiri pack up the courage to continue the fight, All Might is able to continue fighting until reinforcements arrive. They try to stop them from escaping but have no luck in this matter. With everything all said and done, All Might is able to run off and transform in private. 
Once alone, he would comment on the fact that he overdone it but would be dead otherwise. So Shigaraki and Kurage will make it back to their base where they report back to their master, telling them that they were unsuccessful and completely outclassed, also mentioning that they lost the Namu. Their master will say they need to find stronger people to join them so it won't happen again. Shigaraki will have no reason to bring up Deku this time around. So the police arrive at USJ, we learn that all the students are okay. All Might will be okay too, but he just needs some rest. The only two in need of serious medical aid are a razor head and 13. But police also find and capture the Nami. The principal will comment on the need to upgrade the security systems and the detective will comment on wanting to search the school. All Might still goes to the nurse's office of his own accord. While there, he thinks to himself that his time limit is probably shortened now. His detective friend still comes to see him and asks some questions about what happened, but All Might wants to know how everybody else is first. He lets them know that everyone is okay except a Razorhead and 13, also stating that if it wasn't for the three of them risking their lives, things would have turned out differently. All Might clarifies it that the students also risked their lives and that they will be fine heroes someday. Deku calls his personal doctor to report his lack of being able to move while submerged in water. This intrigues the doctor who decides to call Deku in. They do test but don't know what to make of it. All they can deduce is that this is a potential weakness Deku now has. Two days later, a Razorhead is back in class to announce the UA Sports Festival is coming. So now that we have reached the end of USJ, without further ado, the light goal. If you made it this far, I think it's safe to assume that you liked the video, so don't forget to hit the like button. Doing so will get the next part out sooner rather than later. 15 likes within the first week will get the next part out the week after that. Just so there's no confusion, I will have the dates displayed on the screen and also thank you for tuning in. It means a lot. Make sure you check the end cards for the next part because depending on when you're watching this, it already may be out. Like always guys, I'm asking for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, take care. Have a nice day.